Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And in today's episode, we are gonna be discussing Sim Update 8 and what it actually brought to the Sim. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so getting right after it, let's talk about what we're going to do today. We're going to be talking about some of the release notes, the, some of the key points, although I do recommend that everybody take the time. It is quite an extensive list, but I do recommend that you take the time to read through the release notes. But we're going to be talking about some key points in the re release notes. We're going to be talking about some performance changes that I have noticed um, and overall behavior changes. Keep in mind that all of the footage that you're seeing right now has been taken following Sim Update 8. Um, and that's actually key, and we'll talk about why a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, discussing some key points in the release notes. Okay, so starting right from the top, there's a couple of key factors here. The new marketplace interface, including a map displaying available airports. Um, I think that is an absolutely fantastic idea. I've been always wanting to know why that wasn't something that was implemented, given the fact that we had the world map. So now when you go to the marketplace, you know how typically you just see the ICAO. Um, you can actually look at the world map now and get a list of all uh, airports that are currently available for purchase. And that's really awesome because if you're trying to build a specific part of the globe up, if you're really trying to get uh, in a certain region redefined to the best of the uh, options that are available, that's extremely handy. So I really appreciate that. Next thing, new optional propeller system with hundreds of moving services covering the propeller realistically simulated, but it's only been implemented on three planes. I have to admit, I think their choice of aircraft was a little odd. Um, Cessna 152, totally fine. Great trainer. We actually just talked about that the other day on the channel. Uh, the Cessna 208. Okay. I get that. Actually, I will actually retract that. The one I guess that caught me is the Beechcraft King Air 350i. And I guess the reason why that caught me off guard was just, um, I don't know. I guess just the overall flight model and behavior of the King Air, um, I know isn't the greatest. So I guess it's just interesting to me. Maybe it's not that weird. Maybe I'm weird. It's possible. I am weird. I talk to myself sometimes. I'm talking to you guys right now, which technically I'm talking to myself. Anyways, let's continue on. Um, and then the next thing that really caught me is there are a ton of bug fixes, which I have to really appreciate here. Um, and that is one of my biggest complaints going to any simulation, especially upon release. I get it. You know, when, when, when a simulator first launched, first launches, you really do have to push content. You have to push be feature rich. You have to be ready to meet the demand of, of, uh, of the hype that was created prior to the launch of the simulator. Now we all had our, our opinions on the simulation launch and when it launched and did it launch too soon, you know, and that's fine. And then they spent the next uh, six to eight months easily just feature, new feature, new feature, new feature, while the bugs built and built and built. Um, and, you know, we're still to this day, you know, almost two years later, year and a half later now, you know, we're still dealing with um, um, crash of desktops um, pretty, pretty regularly. And if not crash of desktops, we're seeing performance degradation, slow loading times, um, very odd behavior when it comes to some of the aircraft, still features that should be uh, default with the simulator, not working right. Live weather has been a pain in the ass for, you know, a year. Um, so, you know, the fact that they took the time to really go back and I would say that is the bulk of what this, this update is, is bug fixes and improvements to the simulator as is again, everything that I previously listed about the, you know, um, the, uh, the new marketplace interface, new propeller, as well as, by the way, I do want to touch on the new private match game mode for Reno air races. I think that's actually really cool. And I have no problem with that. So now you can set up, if you and your buddy want to go at it head to head at a Reno air race, you can now set that up. I did want to make sure I pointed that. Out. I think I skipped over that by mistake. I think that's pretty hot. I, I really do like that. And I think it'll be fun to set up some challenges with you guys here on the channel. I think that might be kind of fun. Anyway, let me know what you think down below about that one. Um, so talking about a few of the bug fixes that really caught some of the attention for me here, um, let's go ahead and get started on that. 
All right, so a couple of the big things here. Uh, fixed a crash on Xbox when connecting a yoke. I've actually read about that one. I don't personally fly on the Xbox, but that was that was pretty sad. That that's a bad one. Uh, I, you know, especially given the fact that you have flight controls coming out uh, that were specifically for the Xbox. Uh, fixed a crash in the world map. I have suffered the crash to desktop on world map. God knows how many times every single time I go to select my departure location. As I've stated before, I always do my flight plans in the cockpit, but I select my uh, destination of, or departure, obviously, from the world map, just like everyone else. And I have ran into plenty of times where I go to click that button, boom, gone. Um, and then the other one was panning the world around. I would sometimes drop it. So that's a really awesome fix. Um, let's see here. F fixed a performance drop when the default audio device was used. It was funny. I read about this one about uh, a few weeks ago and couldn't really tell if that was an issue. And we'll talk about that later on when we get to performances. Um, really interesting behavior. I'm still not quite sure where the two collided, but they certainly did. Um, and let's see here. The next one that caught my attention right away. The default binding for rudders with VR controllers has been changed to avoid input interface interferences with other devices such as HOTAS and preventing and prevent control freeze when hovering over cockpit panels. Um, so I tested the VR hand controllers once. I'm not a big fan of VR hand controllers. Um, I, I like that tactile feel and that resistance feeling that you get, you know, when using the, the physical desktop controllers. However, obviously for testing purposes, I absolutely checked it out and did notice some very odd behavior. I never ran into the specific one, uh, but it does seem to make a, a big difference. And we're going to talk about VR next. Um, there is one thing right off the bat that is a known issue with VR players. So focus up for just a moment. If you use VR, be sure that if you uh, make sure that the V-Sync option is not set lower than 60 frames per second. For example, some of us, you set it to 45 frames per second. Um, do not set it uh, below 60. If you set it below 60, you're going to see some negative performance impact. Um, and again, that is to all virtual reality headset users. V-Sync cannot be below 60 frames per second in this current release. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about a few more things here. All right, so we have several crashes fixed across the title. We just talked about a few of those. Ongoing performance optimization work. I will absolutely agree with that. I have noticed a major difference in the way the sim is performing once you are in world. Um, so once you're in the cockpit, once you're flying around, I am noticing a massive difference. I am seeing significantly less stuttering, significantly less flickering out in the distance. Uh, the overall frame rate seems to have jumped anywhere from 10 to 14 frames per second for me, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I was set to a high configuration on my graphic settings. Everything you're seeing here on these videos is set to ultra now, uh, with the exception of I have depth of field removed as well as motion blur. I do not like the way they're implemented, um, but everything else currently is set to ultra and I'm rocking at about 57 frames per second in all of these videos. Now it is very important to mention as I am talking about frames per second that the one aircraft I have not tested in yet is the flyby wire A320. Fly by wire A320, you are bound to take a significant uh, frames per second hit um, simply because of all the features and capabilities that it has and what it takes to power those displays as far as keeping them up to date as the simulator moves forward. So keep that in mind. But I absolutely agree that there has been a pretty significant performance increase. Lower GPU consumption when the main window is minimized. I actually noticed that for the first time about three weeks ago. Um, I was alt tabbing out of the uh, simulator to look at something completely different and notice that my v GPU usage was still pegged. Um, so that was a big deal to me. That's actually kind of nice to see. And here is probably what we were talking about. Fixed frame rate drops on direct X 11 when the player has been in multiple external windows. I do this all day long. Every single video I am in multiple vi windows. And I think this is fun, kind of funny because I've commented before on previous videos that as the video goes on or maybe a live stream, we actually guys, if you remember, for those of you who watched my previous live stream, um, we noticed that towards the end of it, I started having frame rate issues. This makes way more sense. So we were dropping frames. Uh, so it's very interesting to me, an interesting cause, but it's nice to know that has been fixed. The next big one is weather, and I am super stoked and very happy to say that the live weather seems to be has have improved on dramatically. As we have all discussed and seen in the past, live weather could take sometimes anywhere from five minutes or more to actually load. Uh, it is virtually instant now. 
absolutely instant clouds from the second you trigger live weather off to the second you trigger it back on boom you just watch those clouds you know go right in front of you um so it's a big indication be ready for it there have been twice that i've turned live weather on and off and when i turn it back on it kicks the crap out of the plane uh so be ready for that uh you know like your wing will dip you're shocking you know the wind suddenly hits your aircraft that wasn't there before be ready for that um, and another weird issue. I didn't even know about this one. Um, oh, fix the Q and H altimeter in live weather. If they fixed the altimeter in live weather, I am so stoked about this. Improved the thickness of clouds on overcast. Uh, you'll see some of that footage here, uh, in the sim here in a minute. Uh, so stay tuned when you're seeing the CJ four, uh, we did a big overcast cloud and I loved it to our VR users. Several bug fixes and improvements on the cockpit panels via interactions uh, were changed and adjusted to make them easier and more comfortable to use. Multiple throttles are now controlled simultaneously with VR controllers, so you don't have to worry about moving one throttle at a time anymore with multi-throttle engines or aircraft, excuse me. Um, the other big one that caught my attention was, let me give you a second. Oh, the toolbar, the toolbar. That was one of the biggest reasons that, that uh, the other biggest things that I hated about using the VR controllers was that the toolbar I found to be an extreme pain in the butt to use. Um, and honestly, even when using a mouse, it's still a little weird, but it's not quite as bad. Um, VR controllers are not connected as a new device in every game session. So that part was fixed. That's very nice. Um, and then there was one more. Oh, volumetric lighting effects are fixed in virtual reality. That should make the picture significantly nicer. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to check out VR today myself, but that is something that we'll definitely be diving into later in the week. And a few more generalized fixes to be aware of. The weather radar not updating while in flight has been adjusted, so you should be seeing weather on the weather radar that actually matches what you're seeing out the window. I have noticed that one myself, which is why I rarely ever use weather radar in the simulator, so we'll have to get back into using that again now that that has been adjusted. Um, sort of looking forward to that. Uh, barrel minimums are now settable through a key binding as well as radar minimums or radio minimums. So, um, that's actually kind of nice. You can actually swap back and forth, um, by simply using a key binding. A lot of the key bindings I feel in Microsoft flight simulator are definitely missing. And a lot of them are crucial. I don't know that I would consider these two a high priority for me. I guess the reason why I wanted to mention them specifically was to show that new key bindings are being added. Generalized for autopilot settings when selecting the half bank mode on autopilot, a green arc displays on the max bank on the uh, attitude indicator. That's actually kind of cool. Um, so what that means is there's, if you guys have ever seen in your autopilot on your aircraft, a button that says bank, and you don't know what that means. What it is is a bank limiter for the autopilot prevents the autopilot from banking the aircraft past a certain degree. I believe 30 degrees is the limit. Um, I think, and I think, uh, 15 degrees is the limitation. I have to go back and look at the documentation. 30 degrees might be the limitation, uh, meaning that the aircraft will be unable to bank beyond 30 degrees. The nice part is a real quick answer to this question can be taken by simply turning on your bank limiter on your aircraft and at your attitude director indicator on like a G1000 or G3000, you will see a green arc indicating the maximum bank range that the aircraft is currently limited to. Okay, and there are also a ton of aircraft specific fixes. I Again, I'm going to encourage you guys to please, 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 please pull up your release notes from the main menu of Microsoft Flight Simulator and take a look down towards the bottom and you'll see a bunch of aircraft specific fixes and adjustments as well as generalized adjustments um, just above them. Um, there are a ton to go through. This was definitely a it's time to clean shop update and I'm very, very impressed with it. Now let's talk about some of the things that I've noticed right away with it. As I stated previously, the performance overall, I think, has been significantly improved upon, especially while in sim. Um, I am not noticing any stuttering ever since the launch of this simulator. Um, where I would normally see it specifically would be either out in the distance, you'd see some flickering, not to be mistaken with stuttering, but flickering, um, and then rendering in new tiles, I would get some stutters, and then turning out to the left or right, looking out the side windows. Everything out in the forward view seemed to be rolling in fairly smooth, but I would notice it very significantly when looking down at the peripherals of the aircraft, you know, the left and right wing, the 3-9 line. Um, I would notice some stuttering coming across the ground. Um, and I've noticed that that seems to be very, very smooth. Again, as we discussed earlier, I was able to dramatically increase the graphic settings back up to where they were a few months ago, which is basically everything is set on ultra minus two things. I disabled the uh, depth of field as well as motion blur. 
and I'm getting relatively uh, high 50s to very scrape in the edge of 60s frames per second by doing so. Now, obviously, this is going to be significantly uh, changed based on the aircraft you're flying and based on the region of the world. Um, I'm certainly not going to expect that same kind of behavior while flying over New York when coming out of Tucson, Arizona. Uh, Tucson, Arizona could probably fit in the glove box of somebody in New York. Um, when you compare the two sides of the cities. Um, but it is nice to see because that was a concerning point was the fact that, OK, well, in Tucson, I wasn't able to hit the high 60s or, or high 50s, excuse me, on ultra settings. I had to turn everything down to high or lower um, about a month ago. And uh, it really it was something that I've gotten used to, but it was definitely something that I absolutely noticed and that has been adjusted. The load times, I was noticing the load times from hitting the fly button from the world map were actually significantly longer today. However, at first I was a little concerned about that, but when I went back and loaded them again, uh, it was significantly faster. So I'm thinking that there was a, a cache reset um, on each aircraft if I were to take a bet. For example, the CJ4 took probably six, seven minutes to actually load into the simulator. I logged out, loaded back up again, literally completely closed the simulator later started it back up went back into the cj4 same location same settings and it loaded significantly faster um, the overall load time from start to um, at the main menu i don't think has been improved particularly at all i didn't notice much of a difference at all in that category which is fine um, there are different hacks and and things that you can do out there that will actually remove uh, much of the load time for microsoft flight simulator and i think we're going to be talking about one of those later on this week um, but anyways, guys, so overall, that's about the biggest things that I wanted to point out for you guys for today. Again, I cannot stress enough. Please take the time to read through the change notes. Even if you don't understand everything that you're reading, that's totally fine. But you may find something that's pertinent to you that sort of comes out that you weren't expecting to see. Um, this is a very, very big win, in my opinion, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's nice to see this in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, there was a lot of discussion in different videos and different forums of people discussing, you know, well, you know, we want to see new features. I don't want to see new features. I want to see the sim get ironed out to a um, highly functional, highly stable platform that we can enjoy our flight simulation experience on with, with the aircraft that we have available. And then <clears throat> slowly build on that. So I think this is a big win in my book. I'm very happy to see this. Obviously, this is only day one. It still has to be put through its paces. And uh, we're definitely going to be doing that as the week goes on. Let me know how Sim Update 8 is working out for you guys today. As always, stay safe and healthy. And I will see you folks in the next one.